everyone. This is Nick White, co-founder of Harmony, and I'm really excited to introduce our next workshop, which is Band Protocol. Band Protocol is an emerging leader for cross-chain decentralized oracles. Uh, and using Band, developers can create their own oracles for any external data source using fine-tuned parameters for update time and security. As an open blockchain platform for decentralized applications, I think it's really important that Harmony remains unbiased and neutral in terms of the partners and tooling that we bring onto our chain, because we should be giving developers the choice for what kinds of oracles or tools that they want to use. And so I'm really excited for Band in this workshop to present a guide on how to integrate their standard data set, which covers a growing list of 145 plus price feeds for foreign exchange, commodities, and, and crypto assets. So along with this, they're also going to demonstrate how to build a DeFi app using Oracle natively on Harmony. So I hope you guys really enjoy this. And uh, I also want to mention that there's a $3,000 prize from Harmony and Band for the team that, uh, the best team that uses the Band Oracle in their uh, app that they submit. So um, really want to incentivize you to try this out. And uh, without further ado, here is the Band team. In this workshop, I'll show you how you can integrate the Band Protocol public standard data set onto your decentralized application on the Harmony platform, right? So basically, Band Protocol provides a public standard data set which consists of the foreign exchange rates, the commodity, and also a lot of cryptocurrency information are publicly available on the blockchain that you can, as a decentralized application developers, can basically use it securely and easily on your application. So here I have the documentation website uh, we will shortly upload this onto the official documentation on bandchain.org and also on the workshop website. But essentially, this explains you how you can uh, utilize the standard data set onto the Harmony blockchain. And there are two ways you can use it. Uh, first, you can use it on the smart contract. And the second, you can use it on your front end through bandchain.js. But I will only cover the, the smart contract part in this workshop. So on smart contract, there are two main functions, the get reference data and get reference data block, and they return the reference data object, which is a struct consisting of three numbers. The first one is the exchange rate, and the second one is the last time the base token is updated, and the third number is for the quote token. And here there's some example usage on how you can you know, build a demo oracle. And the standard data set, data set smart contract is available here. And in this workshop, I will show you how you can build a simple uh, synthetic based uh, decentralized exchange on the Harmony uh, platform. So here, let's go into the Harmony IDE which is very similar to Remix and you know, it allows you to easily uh, develop a smart contract and deploy it onto the Harmony blockchain. So I have three files. Uh, the first file is a price oracle. And in the top part, uh, we declare the interface for the standard reference data. And the first one is the struct for reference data. And there are two functions. Uh, the first function, get reference data, takes two symbols and returns the reference data. And the second function is very similar to the first one, but instead take a, a list of symbols, right? The list of base symbols and quote symbols and returns the list of reference data. So you can basically do a query for multiple pairs uh, in one function call. So here, if I uh, save and compile the contract, and I use the app feature to inspect the deployed contract. Now, if I do one USD, for example, then I can get the current price of the Harmony One token multiplied by 10 to the 18. This is the current price and also the two timestamps as mentioned. I can also try to do it for other type of data as well 
like you know the exchange rate of the British British pound and US dollars or the Australian dollars okay good next uh, we declare the price oracle contract which is essentially a wrapper on top of the reference data interface and it takes the reference data contract as the argument and exposes one function, the get price function, that takes two symbols and returns just the price data. Now, if I deploy the price oracle contract, takes in one argument, which is the 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 reference data. Click deploy. Okay, it is now deployed to the Harmony testnet, and now I can try to use the get price function. Let's say one USD, then I get just only the the price part, right? We strip off the the part that we might not need the the timestamps uh, for this demo. Similarly, for other type of data as well, like the British pound USD, we get only the the, the exchange rate. Now we go to the e-token contract. This is this contract is essentially similar to the ERC20. Uh, it is a token contract and it allows the owner, which is the exchange, to mint and burn the token. And this token represents a real world currency, right? It tracks some underlying currency. And because uh, Harmony is fully EVM compatible, we can utilize this. Uh, existing uh, libraries such as OpenCiplin ERC20 and also OpenCiplin Ownable Access Control on this IDE directly. So here I'm importing uh, both of them. And the eToken contract is essentially allowing uh, the owner to mint and burn tokens, right? And, 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 and anyone owning the token can transfer the tokens around. And lastly, we go into our main contract, the FX swap, which is the contract for creating synthetic token. And anyone can come to mint and burn synthetic token. And we use the band protocol price data to determine the exchange rate. So in the constructor, it takes the price oracle uh, contract instance and also the base token, which is the symbol for the native token in this platform. In this case, it is one, basically the Harmony token. And the owner can create a new market. Uh, and when you create a new market, you put in the name symbol and the underlying currency, which is the symbol that you use as the exchange rate. Then anyone can come to mint the new token by passing in the native token, which is the one token. And the system will determine how much uh, of the, the, the synthetic token they will get based on the price oracle. Similarly, for the burn function, you can burn any amount of synthetic token and you will get the native token, which is the one token back, depending on the price oracle. And you can also atomically swap between the two tokens without going to mint and burn uh, individually by using the swap function, swap from token one to token two, and it also uses the price oracle to determine you know, how much you will get uh, based on the, the exchange rate. So now that we understand the FX swap, we can try to deploy the contract. Uh, I compiled the FX swap now, there are two arguments. The, the, the base token is one token, as mentioned, and the Oracle is the Oracle contract. This Oracle contract. Now, if I deploy, okay, the contract is deployed. If I click base token, I can see the one. And now we can create a new market. Let's create USD. And also the GDP.
I think the error happens because I'm trying to send one transaction before the other one is confirmed. Okay, now I think we have created both market. If I press USD, as you can see the E token for the USD. And if I type GBP, you can see the E token for the GBP. Okay, you can see that the underlying currency is USD and this is GBP. Now, if I use my address and see the balance, I can see that I have uh, zero USD right now. And same for the GBP, I have zero. Now we can try to mint new USD token. I can go to the mint function and press and paste in the address, which is uh, this address. And now the mint function, it is a payable function and you need to pass in the native token, the one token. So now I am passing in uh, 2000 one token. And here I expect that I will get uh, around around 10 USD, right? Because because one how one how many token is uh, approximately uh, this price. If I multiply it by 2,000, I should get this much uh, US dollars. And sure enough, this is the balance of my US dollar. Now we can try to use the swap functionality to swap from US dollars to the British pound directly. Now let's look at the exchange rate again. So this is the exchange rate. If I swap $5, I should be getting around 3.8 British pound. So I'm swapping and here I'm putting the USD address and also the British power address and I'm swapping $5. Okay, confirmed. Now if I look at my USD, I have $5 less and for the GBP, I should have around 3.8 British power, which is correct. And lastly, we can test the burn function. So let's say if I burn uh, some British power, say I burn two, two pounds, and I should be getting uh, some extra one token. So here, if I go to the burn function, I can say I'm burning around two British power. Okay, I can see that my balance uh, decreases, right? And this means the burn transaction is completed. Okay, so here is the full example of how you can build a simple application 
using the band protocol standard data set. So you know, please let us know if you have any question on the, 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 the hackathon website. And we're excited to see what you guys come up in the hackathon. So happy hacking. Thank you.